Well, welcome back to the dark side, although this one's just a little bit smaller. This is a 2001 Sea Ray 340 Sundancer. We'll be spending the next few months cruising on her from the Florida Keys over to the Bahamas. She's not a very big boat, but she is fast and perfect for two people cruising around and island hopping. She's really well set up with new upholstery, brand new navigation equipment, freshly overhauled engines, a brand new generator, and much more. In this video, we're going to give you a tour of the outside and the inside of the boat and then take it out for a sea trial. So I am having a new boat built, the Island Spear 525E, the electric uh, sailing catamaran. It's still a few months out, so I wanted to get something to create some content on for you guys. And I thought, why not try the smaller motor vessel route? So this is what they call an express, express cruiser. Uh, it's got one cabin up front, uh, a head, a galley, a little seating area, and then it does have a second cabin in the back where we're using that for storage. But this is a Sea Ray 340, a 2001. Uh, and kind of the general plan with this boat is that I'm gonna sail it here for the next three or four or five months and then sell it sometime in May or June, uh, probably in Florida, but you know, hey, if you wanna get it here down in the Bahamas or something like that, that we can, that we can work something out, you can go to sailingdoodles.com and then there's a contact me page if you're interested in buying it. Uh, what I do and I'm doing for it is basically I'm selling it for what I've got into it. I paid $54,000 for it. I did $11,000 in uh, immediate kind Kind of like upgrades and repairs. I spent another 5,000 or yeah, around 5,000 on, on dinghy and motor and then did some more upgrades, uh, added an autopilot, new navigation equipment, uh, new sensors, all these things, another six or seven thousand dollars. Total I'm in for it around 80, 85,000. So honestly that's what I'm going to try to get out of it. Uh, it's in really great shape and uh, it's only got 100 hours on the motors. It's got a full bimini enclosure, top, all that stuff. Air conditioner works great. Generator, uh, you know, it's really set up for cruising or just weekend partying, whatever you want to do. This little tour is a little bit out of order because I wanted to do the proper tour when I had all the new components in. After this tour, we'll kind of go back to doing the sea trial on it and everything. So let me talk about this boat. We're here uh, down in the Bahamas right now. It's really rolly here. Here. at night it calms down but like it's not, it's all the boats going by there's a lot of wakes going by so sorry about it. it's a little bit rolly but what it is what it is so here we have uh, start with the anchor it's a little plow type I forget what kind it is exactly it's uh, but I do have 150 feet of 5 5 16 chain uh, that's an upgrade that I did it only had about 15 feet of chain and all road so it's got all new chain the windlass looks great it does have a spotlight up here. How many boats have you actually seen that have a working spotlight? That spotlight is brand new uh, with foot pedals to control the windlass here or you can control the windlass from the cockpit. So we'll move to aft a little. One of the repairs I did here is that this, this deck was getting a little soft, uh, like the fiberglass and all that. So I had this kind of re-fiberglassed and now it looks great. You can't even tell it was done. So moving back here, uh, there's not a lot going on up here. You could if you want. I do have some uh, some cushions up here that you can put in and, and kind of do like your little hangout area up here. We've got the Starlink here. It works great. Uh, we'd probably have it per more permanently mounted if we were actually keeping this boat long term. But other than that, I mean, there's not a whole lot to talk about up here. So let's go back to the cockpit and we'll talk about more there. All right, on the, on the stern of the boat here, it has a nice little swim platform and it does have a ladder for boarding uh, after swimming. And uh, basically what we've been doing is we've been propping the dinghy up on this back uh, swim platform and tying it down and that has worked great, no problems at all. And then your power cables and your water cables come through here. You open up this little work area here. You have your shore power connections. You have your uh, city water connections. Uh, you have a uh, water, fresh water output and all that. And we store the stern anchor and a few other things in here. There's not a whole lot to it back here. But what is really nice is it has this full enclosure. You know, after looking at a few different boats, I was trying to decide what I wanted and I looked around and I decided whatever boat I had, I wanted had to have one of these full enclosures. And I'm telling you that has made all the difference when it's cold and windy or rainy. Having this here has been really nice that we can still use this as a living space when it's in not nice outside. This dock is really high. I mean, this it's even like mid tide right now. So normally if you're on a floating dock or something, you step right on here, you enter through here, and then there you go. Or, you know, you would prefer to be port side tied, makes it a little easier to get in and out. On this 
just because that's the slip they had available. We're starboard side tie, so we kind of have to step in through here. Not ideal, but it works just fine. All right, and then uh, this is the dinghy. It's a West Marine, just a little nine foot dinghy. One thing I did want to make sure is it had a rigid bottom. I've been on a couple dinghies that have inflatable bottoms or no keel at all, and they are terrible dinghies to use. So this one uh, does have a rigid dinghy, so, uh, you know, makes it easier for getting around. Uh, so with that, let's go inside the cockpit and then give you more of that. All right, so this is the cockpit. So you can see that, you know, when you have this big enclosure and, and all the lights in here, you can really use this space even when it's not great outside or when it is great side outside, you have enough shade to be able to sit here and, and, and all that. All these either detach um, or, you know, we've got this part rolled up right here so you can kind of keep the bugs out if you want to keep it in and have some airflow go through or you can enclose the whole thing. Uh, you know, we have another panel that goes here. We've got it off right now because they're coming in going from here. Normally we'd enter from the, uh, the, the uh, swim platform. But all the upholstery has been recently redone. It's not original. So like it's in really good shape. This table is a little wobbly right now. I literally just got some new screws to uh, kind of, I have to re-tap, re-drill the screws. They're a little bit bigger and kind of tighten everything down. But I will do that. It's just got storage on either side. Like I have my tools in here. I've got a few things under here, like the, the fuel can and all that. On this side, there's more storage and all that. Uh, we've got our, uh, you know, cooler for, for keeping beer cold. This is our three kilowatt uh, solar generator. So rather than putting solar on all that, this is a three kilowatt uh, power supply that the boat can connect to. I've got a connector here. We can do 30 amp into it. And then that'll run the boat for a very long time because really the only electronics on this boat this thing needs is the, it has two refrigerators. And we've got, I'll show you that in a minute. We've got the outdoor one turned off just because we don't need it. And so we don't need to use that extra power. And then I've got 400 watts of solar that we can put out on the bow for when we're uh, you know, at anchor and just want that extra power during the day. But I mean, basically the only electronics on this boat that'd be when we're at anchor somewhere would be any lights we wanna use and the indoor refrigerator and, and you know, water pump, things like that. So then we'll move, oh, this is uh, the dinghy motor. It's a Mercury 9.9. Brand new, haven't even used it yet. There's not even oil in it yet. So uh, our next stop, we will be anchoring out and we'll hook all this up and get it working. But for now, brand new. Uh, let's uh, head up here to the uh, helm station. Over here, uh, just to the port side of the boat before you get up to the helm station on the starboard side, it does have a wet bar outside. Uh, so you get water there. It's got all new speakers on the outside. And so four speakers outside and it has I don't remember, four, two or four speakers inside, and it also has a subwoofer that lives under this seat. So the audio is really nice. This is the outdoor refrigerator. Um, it uh, has a little freezer up top, and then you can you know, put cold drinks in there, whatever you need. We're not using it right now because uh, we put our cold drinks in the cooler. And, you know, we keep ice on there to keep it for three or four days because it's one of those really thick ones. And so just to not have the extra power consumption, I'm not using it. And then over here, a little drop top uh, uh, trash can. And so, you know, you don't have to run downstairs, throw stuff away every time. With that, we will head over to the helm station. All right, this is the helm station. Um, pretty much everything you need here. It's got eyes and glass all the way around. So you, if it's raining and all that, you're, you're staying nice and warm. You un unzip this if it's cool, hot in here and you get plenty of airflow going through. And it does have a little vent that is electric. So it makes it easy uh, putting it in and out. Uh, your throttle controls here, your transmission controls here, your uh, trim tabs here. All of this is new. It's got a brand new Garmin nine inch chart plotter that connects to the brand new Garmin uh, autopilot head unit here which connects to the brand new autopilot hydraulic pump and connections in the back so it is all uh, brand new for that so works great the autopilot is amazing we didn't have an autopilot for the first few month we were doing it makes all the difference having that and a brand new standard horizon vhf the wheel is brand new uh, let's see here uh, here is the controls for the headlight which is brand new it has a remote control for the Garmin Autopilot, brand new. Uh, speakers there and there. Really, it's, I mean, a re all the gauges work, everything's great. The engines have about 100 hours each on them. And yeah, it's, uh, we have, by the way, we have our tracker right here. So if you're a patron or a channel member, you can uh, track us as we go along. We've been averaging something like 
This says the last 200 miles, we've been averaging 19 miles an hour, which is pretty good considering, I believe we were in the ICW for quite a bit of that time, uh, leaving Fort Lauderdale and all that. Uh, so it was nice. I know that the last, the last couple legs, we've been averaging like 21, 22 miles an hour, about 20 knots. And again, all this upholstery is brand new. This thing pops up if you want to sit up on it right here. Sorry, I'm still bleeding all over the place. I'm doing some work earlier. Uh, but really nice and comfortable here and with the autopilot. So we can just sit right here and kind of chill out. It's, uh, it's nice having the autopilot. So here you also have your hatch controls. So uh, back there in the cockpit, uh, there's a lift here that lifts up this hatch. I've got all this crap on here right now that I would have to move, but it lifts up the hatch to get to the engines, which are freshly rebuilt. Uh, remanufactured. Uh, they only have 100 miles, mile, 100 hours on them each. They are Mer Cruiser 7.4, uh, 454 is basically 320 horsepower each. They're gas powered. It'd be nice to have diesel, but then that would make this boat considerably more expensive. And then right next to that is a brand new Westerbeek. I believe it's a four or five kilowatt. I think it's a four kilowatt generator, but that's all you need for this boat. The only thing this boat would need the generator for is the air conditioning. Uh, the refrigerators run on AC or DC. And so you're fine. And then we'll be plugged in with our little solar generator there. And so it should be really nice. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, the boat gets up and boogie. We can do, you know, uh, we're normally cruising at about 20 knots. That's about 3,400 RPM on the motors. You know, I, if, you, if you wanted to go up a little more, I'm sure you could get it up to 25 knots, but then you'd also be burning a lot more fuel. So I think I've talked about everything up here. Let's let Amanda show you the inside of the boat. All right, guys, come on down. I will show you the interior of the boat. All right, and that completes the <laughs> tour. <laughs> no. <laughs> up front, we have a queen size bed, our closets, his and hers um, on either side. This actually, there's a curtain. So there are two curtains in here that divide the cabins. They're, they actually work really well. We had another couple stay with us and um, we couldn't even hear them at night. We have more storage under the bed. Um, just after that is the galley and there's lots of storage space considering how there's lots of storage space considering how small the boat is. We have cabinets up top, lots of cabinets actually. And down below we have three drawers, refrigerator, pretty decent size actually. Microwave, lots of storage under the sink. Over here we have our stove, electric stove. Two burners, works pretty well. We have, uh, obviously we have our sink right here. And this is a trash can, but we actually use it for storage. It has your master ignition controls, AC and DC controls, waste and water level. And what am I missing? Generator. And generator. And on this side, we have the dinette, this is the starboard side. We have the dinette, which actually has a lot of storage underneath. I keep my clothes down here. <laughs> there are this, there's lots of storage under here. And this actually becomes a, another bed, a third bed, which is great. If you want to have a giant sleepover on this boat, <laughs> TV up here, brand a brand new TV up here, actually, and more storage up top. Back behind, we actually use this cabin as storage. Would you like to show them? <laughs> okay, so I'll show you, but don't judge us. We have lots of stuff on this boat. <laughs> as you can see, there's tons of space over here. We're storing all of our water toys, food, drinks, extra equipment, suitcases, you name it, it's over here. We have a station over here. It's an end table that we keep a lot of the camera gear on. There's a closet here. Back over there, there's even more storage above this bed, which is actually a pretty nice seating area as well that becomes a bed. We had another couple stay on the boat and they said it was pretty comfortable. On this side, we have the head. It's a wet head and there's storage down below under the sink and up top above the sink. Then there's Actually, uh, there's a little bidet in here as well that Bobby installed recently. So you have everything you need in this, uh, in this wet head and the water heater works really well. And that's the grand tour of the interior that took all of five minutes. All right, well, that is seven. Uh, I did not name the boat. It came with that name. I just didn't want to have to change it. What are your thoughts so far on it? Oh, I like it. It's been comfortable. And I don't know, your first, when you first got on it, you were like, eh. I know. What I was... did I get myself into? <laughs> I know. It seemed a little small, but 
We'd never lived in like one room together, Yeah. but it works out. It's yeah. really been good. Yeah, it has been. It's fast, little boat. Uh, it, it's not expensive in marinas, uh, you know, because it's only 34 feet long. It does use a bit of gas, uh, you know, uh, but that's just a motor vessel for you. That's what you're going to get. But anyway, so if you are interested in this boat, I'll be selling it sometime in May or June. Uh, we can work out where it's delivered and all that. And, and the deal, you can email me, bobby at sailingnoodles.com or check out sailingnoodles.com and hit the contact uh, me page and send me an inquiry if you're interested in it. And uh, yeah, but uh, now it is, I wish, yeah. see there's so many wakes going by. That's the problem. Maybe I know. Nice and calm here. At night it's not bad here, but all right. So we got some work to do and then we're gonna go find dinner, go to Atlantis and uh, check it out. Okay, let's do it. Let's go. All right, today we are gonna take the boat out on a sea trial with the uh, broker that sold it to me. He's also a patron. Uh, you'll meet him in a minute. So it's a pretty nice guy. Uh, when I called him about the boat, he's like, wait, Bobby's sailing doodles? I'm like, yeah. So anyway, so he helped me uh, buy the boat. Obviously, he's a broker on it and set up the survey and all that. And even all the di di discrepancies they found on the survey, like every boat's going to have something. He also does the maintenance stuff. So he uh, changed the oils and repaired some fiberglass that was pretty soft and a few other things and got it all done. And the boat is like, he did a lot of other stuff, like clean the boat and got all the other things working that weren't working, rebuilt the vacuum flush system. And so nice guy, got it done. So he's gonna, he volunteered to give us a little sea trial to show us the ropes on the boat. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna text him, tell him we're going to go. You ready? Oh yeah. Are you ready? Are y'all ready? Are you guys ready? All right, here we go. All right, so here is the man himself, Jamie Switzer. Hey Bobby, how's it going buddy? Good, thanks for uh, hooking all this up for me. Not a problem, it was a labor of love. Yeah, there you go. So, and thanks for being a patron long term, that's always helpful. It's yep. kind of cool call, talking on the phone like the first time, he's like, oh, you're Bobby White. I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah, cool. Recognize the voice. There you go. All right, so you're going to give us a, kind of like a little run through today and a sea trial? Yep, we're going to take it out, give it a good flogging, make sure nothing breaks, and uh, before we turn you loose. Yeah, all right. Oh, and uh, it's American Yacht Sales, right? Or That's yacht, correct. AmericanYachts.com, or what is it? Uh, yeah, either, either okay. works. Jamie Switzer at Outlook.com, Jamie.Switzer at AmericanYachts.com, all, right. all the above. We'll link to it. All right, let's there get this. Go. We've already disconnected shore power and all that. Let's get this thing running. You ready? Let's go. So one thing, since this is a gas engine that we want to make sure we do is always turn on the blower, which is right there. Because you need to make sure all the gas fumes are out of that uh, engine bay, because if it sparks up, boom, it blows up. So it's on. And the ignition and the breakers for the ignition are all down here. You hit start up there, but I have the master ignition switches and the breakers down here. Yeah, yeah. First time driving this boat. Hopefully I don't wreck it. Hopefully not. Yeah. All right, let's see. Jamie's getting these lines out here. All, All right, right, Captain Bobby, don't screw this up. Oh. Oh. Yep. Right. And we're off. Oh, uh, take two. Man, this throttle's touchy. Yeah, like I said, it's got really small wheels. Yeah, it, uh, once it gets going, it's going, but yeah. it just, yeah, you barely have to touch that throttle on it. We left the marina and then headed out into open water so we could really put the throttle to her. She starts playing in at about 17 knots and cruises comfortably at 20. I'm not used to 
everything moving so fast on the charts? Strip tease or? Yeah, I put my sweater I on because it's a little cool in this wind. It's nice out. Why? Give the people say. what they want. But I, what the people want is this new Sailing Doodles hoodie. <laughs> it's a uh, hoodie season. Yeah. That's true. I like the new merch. <laughs> yeah. So check it out. I really like this hoodie. The hats are cool too. And we got lots of shirts, so check that out. Pretty cool stuff. But, man, it's pretty cool sailing around at 20 knots, you know. I just can't believe you didn't have any merch for your best friend. Oh, uh, well, know, I, might have, I, mean, hey, a good, I might have a shirt. I'll have to find one. Where's the love, man? Right, I'll have to look and see what I got. I'm a little disappointed, though, that we didn't find any dolphins. Uh, or we, we, we saw at? some, but we didn't. I guess that's true. It's Courtney's boat. So we're on this dock up here. Where's that? Okay, uh, successful pre run, just a couple little things. We got one of the oil pressure sensors is intermittent, so we're gonna check the wiring on that, um, maybe the gauge or something. And then uh, the starboard engine is running a little too cool. Uh, he's gonna check that out as well. Other than that, um, you know, I think uh, we're pretty good to go tomorrow. Nice. All right, uh, I got a few more things to do. Uh, anyway, and then uh, we'll get moving. So what did you think, how'd you like it? Oh, I thought it was great. We're going fast. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's gonna be great. I mean, like, so running at 20 miles an hour or plus everywhere we go. Yeah. That'll be uh, pretty nice making tracks. Oh yeah. So I like this boat. Yeah. It's nice. I really do. And the generator, we were just running it that whole time. I mean, it's really quiet. You can barely hear it. So. That's new for me. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, I got some stuff to do, and then we're going to dinner here in a while. So, all right. We'll see you guys in the morning. Yeah.